Welcome back. An Ethiopian Airlines plane was forced to make an emergency landing just minutes after taking off in Senegal because an engine had caught fire. An airport spokesperson says none of the 90 passengers or crew were injured. The airline confirmed on Twitter that its Boeing 767 aircraft had to land unexpectedly at Senegal's Bless Diane International Airport near the capital, Dakar, because of a technical problem without providing more detail on the cause. The Dakar incident came after an Ethiopian Airlines Boeing 737 MAX crashed in March shortly after taking off from Addis Ababa, killing all 157 people on board. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, who clinched a peace deal last year that ended two decades of hostility between former arch enemies Ethiopia and Eritrea, is a favourite for the Nobel Peace Prize, which will be announced on Friday. But officials and diplomats say his tendency to bypass government institutions, relying heavily on personal initiative and charisma to drive through change, rankles some at home. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed is a possible contender for the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize for the reconciliation he forged in 2018 with Eritrea. On July 8, 2018, Eritrea's President Isaias Afwerki warmly welcomed the Prime Minister to the Eritrean capital, Asmara. When there is peace between the Ethiopian and Eritrean people, the Horn of Africa region will become a region of peace and development. Our people who live scattered as refugees in humiliation will come back with dignity. Our citizens will not be sold and exchanged like commodities. The meeting was the first of its kind in the 20-year military standoff between the leaders of the two neighbors. The situation between the two countries ran into a deadlock, so it needed that courage somehow to, to, to change the situation, and that's really what happened. And, um, and credit goes to, to the Prime Minister for doing that. But on the other hand, it was, I would rather say now, it was pushed too fast. And, uh, 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 you know, after a year, we haven't seen also full-scale institutionalization of that peace process. Mr. Abiy Ahmed took office in April 2018 and is pushing Ethiopia towards new democratic freedoms and trying to open up the country to the outside world after decades of security-obsessed isolation. He has ended a state of emergency, freed political prisoners, got parliament to lift a terrorist ban on opposition groups and pledged to facilitate foreign investment in key sectors of the economy. As a result of the changes, he is hugely popular with the young people. I will be happy if Dr. Abiy wins the Nobel Peace Prize, and I believe he deserves it. If he wins, it will encourage him to do much better things in the future for Ethiopia. But some are uneasy about Abiy's leadership style, which both fans and critics say often relies on personal initiative and charisma instead of government institutions. Ethiopia has been among Africa's fastest growing economies for more than a decade. It is Africa's second most populous nation after Nigeria. The For centuries, the women of Zanzibar have celebrated special events by having their hands and feet decorated with henna, a plant-based dye. In recent years, henna artists have also been creating their elaborate patterns and arabesques for tourists as a way to earn an income. But when pasted on a body, henna eventually fades. A group of Zanzibari women are now transferring their henna designs onto canvas and paper for posterity and additional sales. Let's watch. For centuries, women of Tanzanian island of Zanzibar have celebrated weddings, holidays and other special events by having their hands and feet decorated with henna, a plant-based dye. The art involves creating elaborate patterns of flowers using a dark paste paint. In recent years, it's been a way for the artist to earn an income, especially in a conservative society that often demands women stay at home. When painted on the body, henna fades after several days. A group of Zanzibari women have found a way to add value to their craft and immortalize their designs. Black henna 
On the body, we use black or red henna. Also, painting on the body is a pretty quick process. It's different on canvas. Painting on canvas takes quite a while because they have a lot of detail. Mwana Ali is part of a group of nine women who have come together to make sure their designs live on. It's not just about keeping their motives alive, it's also a better income generator. We earn more from the canvas painting, but it's not like selling donuts. You can sell one painting in three months, but once you sell, you may get up to 300 US dollars for a painting like that one, but it doesn't come regularly. With body painting, you can earn something every day. Um, or to watch the artist do the henna on my hand, um, but I also think it's really incredible that I've seen it on canvas and it's something that I can take home and share with my family. Um, while this is temporary and it's beautiful to learn here, um, and incredible to watch them do. It's also amazing that I can bring it home and it, the story doesn't stop just on my hand. It can, can be taken other places. The word henna is derived from the Arabic word alhina. It's a tall, hardy plant that can be found in much of the Middle East and the Horn of Africa. The application of henna is also popular in Nigeria. And as we end the program, Africa's top clothing brands and modeling agencies flock to Accra Fashion Week, one of the top events of the continent's fashion calendar. This year's theme is the Year of Return, Ghana 2019, which is an unprecedented marketing campaign by the Ghanaian government to woo investors and tourists from the diaspora market. The Year of the Return was a core theme at this year's Accra Fashion Week, an attempt to encourage Africa's descendants to invest into the continent. American designer Clavon Leonard was one of those showcasing his designs. He paid tribute to Ghana's influential Ashanti community. collection was really inspired this year because I think black symbolizes strength and gold represents tried in the fire. So I combined these two and it was my inspiration behind this collection because I think that's what, you know, black Americans stand for. I think that's what Africa stands for, uh, the richness of culture and the strength of, of being black. Wow. <laughs> As one of the highlights on the African fashion calendar, the event provides a key platform for local designers too. Africans, we have had enough of the inferiority. We have had enough of the limitations. We need to rise and make things work together again. And so my collection is actually talking about we Africans, you could see the flag of all the African countries in there. So what I am trying to say is that Africans, we can do it one as an individual. We all need to come together and make things work. And so enjoy my collection. Thank you. of the designs. Hope you like them. Thanks for watching Network Africa. I am Amarachi Ubani.